it's Jen and Bethany here with an amazing project. This is called Gem Bag. Mm -hmm. And look at this amazing bag here on set. There are two more back here. And I saw Bethany actually bring this to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> I was just amazed because it's so visually spectacular. So I'm like, did you buy that bag? And she's like, no, I, I made that. Made Tell me how, how, what, what made you want to make your own bag? Well, I had gone to a lot of quilt shows a couple years back and quilt shows were really prominent. Yeah, before COVID. You know, <laughs> right. do not speak of it. Um, <laughs> and had seen people with really spectacular tote bags. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the place to showcase them. Wanted to make one of my own. Uh, so I did. And then as I was taking it to quilt shows and quilt market, I got stopped and asked for the pattern enough that I thought I'd write it down, share it with the world. And there it is. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. And this has an interfacing template in it. Mm -hmm. This is a plum easy pattern. And I love that there's refill packs because yeah. this is kind of one of those things where I think when you make your own jam bag, and this was scraps. Yes. But this one is, is this one jelly rolls? Jelly roll layer cake. How versatile. Mm -hmm. I love that. You could get yardage, scraps, a pre-cut, and mm -hmm. still have your bag. But I think when you make your own bag, you're going to get stopped as well. And maybe even talked into making another bag. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, there are the the refill packs. And I love that. You only have to buy the pattern once. Correct. And then you can get the refill packs. Um, I I mean, there's so much on the table. And I've never I don't even know how to make this bag. <laughs> I am definitely because I'm at the gym a lot uh -huh. and I'm always kind of I mean, it's it's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> My bag is not honorable. And so I really would love to learn that. And I know you need more space. So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to jump into more of the audience so that okay. you have the full table because yeah. I know you built this, this is, kind of grid. We're going to need right? a lot of real estate okay. for this. So I'm going to step out of the way. You can spread out and do what you got to do mm -hmm. and teach us how because we all want one of these bags. Um, we can't wait to learn how. So I'm going to be over in the audience cheering okay. you on, and I, too, um, can't wait to make my jam bag. And I think after we get the video rolling, you know, people are able to see it, get their kits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are limited kits of which one, Bethany, are we offering so, kits of? I don't have it made up. We're going to okay. make it on set together. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I don't quite know what it'll look like yet because every bag turns out a little different. Okay. It will be in the Bermuda Boutiques collection here. Oh, this is the moda. Okay. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um but every bag's a little different. I wanted to make that on set uh, with the audience. I love And we'll that. see how that turns out. Okay, so yeah. we're gonna see what that looks like. And then of course, you know, we love to be able to see our customers' projects on Facebook. So maybe you're just gonna get a pattern and make it out of your own fabrics. We would love to see that because I think, I, I love how versatile they are in any collection. And no two bags are going to be alike. Oh. And I think you've told me that. Even with the same collection, your bags are going okay. to be identical. Then I'm going to yeah. get out of here so <laughs> you can show us how. So we know this is a longer video, but Bethany's goal is, of course, just like mine is in any video, that maybe this is the very first bag you've ever made. Um, we know that you're going to take us from beginning to end mm -hmm. so we can be successful. Oh, yeah. So thank you for sharing your ingenious design. And I will be over on the other side watching you show us how to make our bags. All right. Okay. All right. So to get started with this gym bag, the first thing we're going to do is take our jelly roll. Um, and these come with a you know width of fabric strip here. And we are going to cut this in half. For this particular bag, you're going to need a half strip of each fabric. Um, that's going to be more than enough to make this. You might have some scraps that's over. That other half strip is plenty to make another bag. The kit will include like lining and side fabric for one bag, um, but you're gonna have plenty of strip left over if you wanna make a duplicate bag here. Um, we will cut this in half right down the middle. You can do this with a rotary cutter if you'd like. Okay. And I would wanna do this for every single strip. Um, I've got that here already to the side. Um, and I like to lay them out in a way where I can see everything, like all the fabrics, really, really well. Um, and then we're going to want to start thinking about uh, different ways our fabrics can go together. Um, as you can see in the samples behind me, I've got lighter fabrics up top and darker ones at the bottom here. I tried to kind of keep that with this bag as well. 
Um, with this bag here, I've got kind of blues at the top and reds at the bottom. This particular set that we're kidding for you doesn't have like a very distinguished um, like light and dark fabrics. So I kind of went with how can I transition these in a really beautiful kind of like rainbow order here. Um, and then another thing is I'm not going to be cutting out diamond shapes individually one at a time and piecing those together. We're going to do some strip piecing to kind of ease our life on this, make that a little easier um, and get this done a lot faster. So let's start with that. And let's see, I'm going to come over here and pick out my favorite out of this whole collection is this fabric here. And I want maybe three or four to five strips of fabric per strip set that I'm going to make. Um, so I'm just going to see what transitions really beautifully with this. And you can go in the exact order that the jelly roll comes. That's a really great way um, to keep the transitions really beautiful. I like to kind of mix things up a little bit and still see if I can challenge myself to keep that, um, you know, the kind of the, the gradation of that really beautiful. Let's see. I'm liking that. I'm seeing a lot of pink and orange in here, maybe a little bit of green. So maybe my next color might have my next fabric might have a little bit of that to kind of tie it all together. I like that. I think I'll pick one more fabric. I think that's beautiful. That could even go up top. I like that there. Um, and then the next thing I want to do, because we have on the bag here various sizes of these diamond gems here. Um, not all of them are the same width. So we're going to cut some of these down, not all of them. Uh, to various widths between one inch and two and a half inches. If you have your own fabric, the most um, widest width you'd want to use is a three inch width of um, fabric on that. Um, since this one's my favorite, I'm not going to cut it down. I think I will cut this strip down, maybe just take a half inch off it, get it a little bit smaller. And you can just fold that in half or get your long ruler out and keep it all together. What I say, a half inch. And we're going to cut these down to just various widths um, to add that kind of variety and texture of the different di diamond sizes here. Okay. If your strip that you're cutting off is bigger than an inch, you can keep that. And we might use that later in a different part. I think I did that out of order. I think I'll cut this one down actually in half. So I'll take one and three quarters off and I'll save that other strip. Might use it in another strip set later. We're going to want to make um, about, I mean, we're, we're going to use most of our fabric here, maybe um, eight to 12 sets of strips here. And then we're going to take this to our machine and start sewing them together. And when I do that, um, I pick a side to start at. I'll probably start with this bottom strip here. And when I sew on my top strip, I'm going to stagger this um, over, I say, like uphill is on the left side, downhill is on the right side. I'm going to stagger these um, about an inch off of each other and sew that with a quarter inch seam, press it open, and I'll do the same thing on my next one. They're always going to be staggered up to the left just a bit, all these different different widths in here. And you're going to get a piece here that um, is between like six and nine inches wide. Okay, So I've got one already pieced. I want to show that to you. Okay, So as you can see in this strip, strip set here, flip it over. Um, I've pressed all my seams open. You can press them in any direction. I would say just be consistent with what you do. Um, I like a really flat bag, so I press everything open. And then as you can see, everything's kind of going off, I would say, to the left. Left is uphill, right is downhill. And we're going to trim these into three and a half, sorry, three inch wide strips using our 60 degree diamond ruler here from Creative Grids. Um, one thing I like about this is that I've got lines coming through here that I can line up on my um, strip set to keep it that 60 degree perfectly aligned there. And then I'll use my other lines going the other direction to 
measure my three inches. So I want to get as close to the end as I can without maybe cutting off a portion of this. I will measure right at the bottom. Cut this off. And then because I don't want to measure three inches and cut on the wrong side here, I'm just going to flip this piece around really carefully. We're not going to stretch it. And now I can lay this on top and I'll use that three inch line there to measure a three inch wide strip. And we're going to cut as many as we can from this. Some pieces you might, or strip sets, you might get five um, pieces out of, some you might get four. Um, you'll have some scraps left over, but I've got a little project for you at the end that we can uh, utilize those. So I've cut all these, and it looks like I got five full pieces. This one I couldn't get an entire three-inch piece out of, but it's really good. I'm going to save that for a project later. The little bitty here is scrap. And then I would do this for my entire half jelly roll. Um, I think I, I said eight to 12 sets of strips cut into four to five pieces here. I've already got that done, um, and I'm going to pull that out and show you how we're going to lay this out. Okay, so I've got all my strip sets cut down into these strata pieces here. Um, and I just want to show you the, the, the variety I have here. We can see this from the overhead camera. Some of these are way bigger than others. Um, some have really small strips in them. The variety and the um, variety that you put in this is going to add to kind of the beauty. And, um, you know, I said, I call this the gym bag, G-E-M gym bag, because to me it's it's diamonds, it kind of sparkles, it glistens, it's faceted. Um, so all these little variations you put in here add to the beauty of that. Okay, We've got these all cut out, so now we're ready to start laying out our bag, and that's where the interfacing template comes into play here. Okay, So this will be pre-printed. Um, we're working with a lot of bias here. This is going to help stabilize that and get us these really crisp rows. Okay, And this is where also you need kind of a bigger um, tabletop to work on here. I'm going to start, I'm just going to show you the whole thing here. Um, as you can see, there's some, some kind of staggered lines running through here. I've got a jagged edge on that. All that comes into play when we start building the bag and sewing it. Um, let's get into laying this out. And kind of what I want to think about is um, the look I'm going for. I think to the best of my ability, I want to start with blue on one end and see how that transitions down. So we're going to start laying out this bag just on one end here, and we're just going to go for it. Um, I like to pick a strip that might have maybe a bigger piece at the top, because this will get cut off right on that line. And if I go with a really itty bitty piece, I might only be seeing you know a really small, almost square, like quarter inch. Um, of that fabric. So I might pick a bigger one to start with. And anything within that solid line uh, is what needs to, like, that's what we need to cover up. And then we're going to be joining strips to gear here together with a quarter inch seam. So when I lay these on, I don't want to butt them up flush to each other. I want to overlap them by a half inch. So I can get a really good idea of how this is going to look, how much fabric I need. Um, and you can see with this line here, some of this pink will get cut off, but this will help us lay out. So I'm going to lay this out, and we'll see what kind of look we get. I want to go, so on my next piece here, I want to go all the way down to the end, so maybe I'm picking a larger piece. These two are the same, but maybe that larger piece, kind of the look I'm going for. I lay out this whole um, bag here, and really take my time and play with it before I make my final decision. I want this to be blue up top. I'm gonna grab this one here. 
you know what, and I like this because it covers the entire length of this piece here. And then on my very far uh, corners, bottom, left and top right, there's gonna be a little bit showing here. Um, and really on my bag, I think we can see this here, only a very tiny bit shows once we get the binding on. So if I have a little scrap I did pull off of a piece, I can just put that there. If I really am desperate for that to be coordinating, I can cut a little piece off of something, but we're gonna have just a tiny little scrap in the corner. And let's continue to lay this out. I don't know if I have enough to get all of the blue in the top, so maybe I'm gonna try to get my color wash to kind of flow together. So I've got pink here in the middle. I might grab a pink and lay that here and start from the middle and see how my transitions go. I've got purple here, so maybe grab something with a little bit more purple or blue. All right, this one. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay. And then we would continue with the entire fabric, um, again, making sure that these overlap a half inch as we're laying them down. Once we get the entire thing um, filled up how we like it, then we're going to join our strip sets together, okay? So um, this is on, actually this grain isn't on bias, this is, so we want to be careful to not um, stretch that. But when we line these up to sew, we would overlap the points by a quarter inch. You should have like a perfectly equilateral triangle showing through on one end. And from that point to that point should be our quarter inch. We'll sew that press in the direction that you like. We want to clip off that little um, dog ear there, and we'll return that to our uh, interfacing. All right, guys, I cleaned off my table a little bit, brought out my sewing machine. I did want to show you this seam and then how we you know, press this and trim this. So um, I have a tendency to want to sew really fast and furious, and I forget to stop and pin things. Um, and sometimes I can get away with it, sometimes I can't. When I'm sewing, you know, diamonds on point, something on bias, I wanna take my time and pin this to really get that quarter inch uh, overhang on either side. And again, we're gonna sew uh, point to point, or like on the little divot here, uh, that quarter inch seam. Okay, it looks like I pressed all my seams open, so I'm going to continue that with this seam here. Press this open as well. And I would add, you know, all the strips for the length of my strip, however much I've got here. Um, you know, there might be four to six pieces on that. And then I'm going to trim up this little dog ear that's hanging off there. And there, so that when I return this to my interface, and that's going to fit right in the entire um, that strip there, you know, strip two. Um, one thing you may see here that I've pulled out one that I've kind of already worked on is that I've got these long, skinny strips um, in here, and I told you we were going to save some of the smaller strips that we cut off anywhere from three quarters to like an inch and a half um, that we cut off those strips in the beginning when we were first making our strata sets. Um, Sometimes I like to add these as a way to just kind of break up the, um, you know, the direction and the flow of this. And so I might add that to this side, to this side. How we would do that is, I think I'm going to add it to this one on this side. Do I want that that way? No, I like that better. I'm going to sew with a quarter inch along here, flip this open, and then trim this back down to three whole inches. So I'm going to trim this so it's a little shorter and easy to work with, and I'll walk you through that at the sewing machine. Okay, 
You may notice here I'm working with a red thread even though I'm on blue fabric. Um, for something this with this much variety, um, I kind of looked at my fabric set here and you know said what's the most middle color that I have. You know, if you look at the bolts, I've got green to red, purple to blue. Red was kind of the, the middle most color that I had, so that's what I picked. Um, you can work with something maybe neutral to your fabric set, um, but if you need to, you can change out your thread to match uh, the, the color of your uh, fabric that you're working with. I just, like I said, sew a little fast and furious and want to do the sewing more than I want to change out my thread. Okay. So we're going to do a couple things here with this little set. I want to trim this back down to get these overhangs off, and then we're going to trim this whole set down to a, a three inch strip. And then, again, I want to trim three inches from the side that I just sewed on. If I trimmed it for three inches from here, I'd end up with a half inch blue. We don't want that. So make sure that the, you're trimming off of your strata side and not your one strip side. There we go. We're going to take this back to our interfacing, lay that down. That just adds a little texture and variety to this. And again, that last little corner, I would add my uh, little scrap piece here. Um, now to get this adhered down to the interfacing, um, we couldn't print on the interfacing and have it be fusible at the same time. So we printed on it to get you your lines. We're going to grab our favorite school glue stick, and then we're going to really gently uh, glue these pieces down here. So I actually like to take my glue. I like the purple because I can see it where it's going. And I will just kind of run a little bead of this down and then lay, I think, lay that right on top. And I'm going to make sure, some of this one so we can see, that I am right at the edge of that line. I can see I'm off a little bit, so I'll peel that up. Lay that right inside the line. And these are basically gonna butt up to each other really, really close. Maybe do this for all of our rows. So I'm gonna go here with this one. And again, any, any glue, uh, like washable school glue will work perfectly for this. Down. And this tends to set pretty fast. It dries pretty fast, and it also um, dries clear on these purple glue sticks here. Always want to make sure I'm right at that line. And then my little scrap piece will just go right at the edge. Okay. So now we're ready to do kind of piece this all together. We've done our, our strips. We've done maybe some accent strips here. Now this is where the interfacing comes in. We are going to fold that interfacing right where the two sections come together. And so a quarter inch right down this. We'll do this, there's I think 11 or 12 seams here. And then as you can see on row one, you can see through this interfacing, that quarter inch line is already dotted out for you. We can sew right on that for every row here. So I'm gonna do a couple for you and we'll bring it back uh, when it's all sewn.
All right, I've got most of these done. I've got a couple left to do, but I did want to just show you as I was sewing these, I was just thinking of more tips and tricks that kind of helped me um, as I was sewing this. So um, when I fold this in half, um, you know, we really want to make sure that fabric isn't folded when it's in here. Um, but it also helps me, I found, to just kind of come and before I sew that, just give it a nice little press. That's really going to make this really crisp and get that seam just even more accurate. Um, I just, while I was doing this, I was just like kind of amazed. I know I wrote this pattern, but it's been a while since I made one. But I was like, man, like, like working with bias is really difficult, but I'm just sewing a straight line. The interfacing is work, you know, keeping all that bias from stretching. And I don't even have to measure my quarter inch because I'm sewing right on that dotted line. So if you can sew on a line, if you can sew a straight line, well, sew on a line and just fold the fabric, this is going to do all the work for you, which I love that. Make it as easy as possible. All right, we've got the whole piece ironed. And I want to show you a neat thing about this template um, is that once I've ironed it, that line running through the back is completely squared up. That's how we're going to square this up is we're going to cut right on these lines. You can see there's some registration lines showing the very middle. Those should all be lined up now that we've sewn this with our quarter inch. Uh, so we're just going to take this and find our big ruler and square it up from the back right on those lines. Like I know I wrote this and I know I've made a few of these, but this is like the most accurate I've ever had it sewn together. Sometimes it's a little bit staggered and I'll kind of do my best to um, find the middle, um, but that's like the best it's ever done for me, so bravo me. Ooh, that one's really nice too. All right, we've got the front of our bag done with this gorgeous piece of, piece of uh, patchwork fabric and um, we're ready to start turning this into the bag. Uh, when I made this um, at the time, a few years back, um, I was maybe like a little bit of a lazier quilter and I really did not like um, making a separate lining and then pinning that in and sewing it in and turning it inside out. So I thought and thought about how could I get around doing that and I found um, that I could add my inner or my batting to this, add my backing, quilt the whole thing, and then kind of finagle my, my sides in. Um, I'll walk you through that, but um, the first thing we're gonna do right now after we've squared this up is we are going to add a fusible foam uh, to this. This is called Flex Foam, one side's fusible. We're gonna fuse this down and then quilt as desired. I usually like to stitch in the ditch on my long uh, seams here and then add some accent pieces going across. I've already done that. Uh, let me just show you a sample of the foam first and then I'll grab that quilted piece as well. Okay, so this is that flex foam and if you can kind of see here, it's got a good bit of body to it. It's about a quarter inch thick and one side's feasible. So you would take that to your ironing board. Um, I leave maybe a little bit of overhang for squaring up, but fuse that down. And then we'll add our backing to this as well. And um, that one doesn't fuse, it just gets pinned in place or spray basted in place. Quilt however you'd like, and then we'll square that up to the outside of the quilt again, or to the, to the bag top. And that's what I've got here, okay? Beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, I picked blue thread, thread for this and did some lines a little bit close together, a little bit far apart, um, and really took my time with the quilting. I've taken this, it's trimmed up, it's quilted. Our next step is to mark these two lines here. I believe these are 13 and a half inches from the edge, so 13 and a half, straight across. So there's a six and a half inch gap there. 
Um, and I'm gonna sew right on those lines. That's gonna help this bag fold and sit so nicely. So I'll do that right now. All right, so we've got those two lines sewn, and as you can see, now that bag turns into our tote really, really easily, folds beautifully there, okay? You see I've got two grommets on here as um, already. We're gonna add the other two to the other side. And you know, if you wanted your strap to be sewn on, you can do that. Like I said, when I first made this bag, I made it for myself, and I didn't wanna mess with the lining. I kinda didn't wanna add straps in the traditional way. I wanna get it done real fast, so let me show you what I've done. Um, we have measured and marked, I believe this is an inch and a half from the top, and then three inches in. I've got little marks there already, and we are going to use a grommet tool, grommet pliers, to get this um, grommet in here. So um, this will be a product that we do have available for you on our website as an add-on to the um, pattern. And it comes with a couple different parts here. Um, I have these two pieces and my two kind of smaller pieces here and then these are my actual grommets. I'm going to start with my two smaller ones. This is the punch to get the fabric like punched out and then we'll go in and this will actually grommet the thing. So um, I will add these. There we go. Put them together and I want to center right on this. I might have to fold down the fabric a little bit to get close enough to this and then um, if your grip's a little um, weak or not as strong as it used to be, you might need to get some help with this. But it's a big pop there, comes right through, and then you might need to grab a needle to pick out that little bit of fabric that went inside there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna fold this over, get a good bit of leverage on this, and Perfect. And if it doesn't like puncture all the way through and get a perfect hole punch on that, um, you can go in with some really fine embroidery scissors and it'll it'll usually get half of it and then you can kind of clip around the rest. Okay. And then we're going to switch out these pieces here. There's a little tool that comes with the grommet kit to pop these out. And then we'll add our other ones in. Okay. Pull out that piece. Add our other two. And I have to use my brain here. Okay, so I want the kind of, uh, if I turn this around and we look at the other grommets, the back side kind of fans open. This is the cut side. And then uh, that's the smooth side. So I wanna make sure the, I don't know, I call it like top hat and rings. The top hat is gonna go from the back to the top. And it's gonna fit really snug in there. As you can see, this hole of the grommet is a bit bigger than that. That fits really snug. The ring will go, I call it like cup down. If I went it this way, I turn it the other way, like there's a little reservoir in there. We're gonna do that down. And then the pink side will go underneath. It'll be on the top hat. Right? Again, I might have to fold this up a tiny bit. And these are all definitely industry terms and not things that I just made up right now for the for the names of these. Um, if you know the actual names, maybe you can leave that in the comments for me. We are going to press on that, get it nice and tight. That's a beautiful grommet. Same thing on the other side. Again, technical term, that's the top hat. That's the ring, cup side down. And we'll get that grommeted. Beautiful. All right, so the next couple steps might feel like they're out of order a little bit, but the very next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the binding onto this whole um, piece of fabric here that's outside of our bag. We're just gonna stitch it to the front. We're not gonna fold it to the back. This will be a little bit bigger of a binding and we're gonna use a 3 8 seam allowance. So this is a three inch strip of fabric um, that we've pressed in half. 
and then this will go around the whole edge. Uh, one thing I like to do to kind of, instead of joining these two sides, which can get really, really tight on kind of a smaller piece here, is I will take one end of my fabric and press that over into a diagonal like seam allowance and then trim the fabric away. So I'll show that to you right now. Okay. Press that back in. And then using my scissors, I will trim this uh, to a generous quarter inch. Okay. And then when I start to sew this, if you guys saw my um, like hexagon binding tutorial, very similar to that, I'm gonna pick a side here. I don't wanna go right on the bottom because there's gonna be a lot of bulk here already, so I'll go to the side. And I'm gonna sew, um, again with the 3 eighths, down here, I'll flap that open and kind of come a little bit past it, about 45 degree past it. And then we'll close this up again and we'll start where we left off and sew down. So we're gonna have a little bit of an opening, but it will be secure. So I'll go do that at that machine with that 3 8 seam allowance. Right, this first side is done. I did stop my stitch 3 8 from the edge of the quilt here. And what we're gonna do is um, fold this up. If your 3 8 is a little bit generous like mine, you might not land right on that corner. I just wanna position this fabric so that this diagonal line lands right in the corner of my quilt top here. And that this line here continues all the way through unbroken, okay? Once I have that, I'm going to fold down the fabric so that basically the edge of my binding is always flush with the edge of my quilt. I'm gonna pin that just as an extra little bit of security. And then I'm gonna continue with this all the way around. When I get to the last edge where we're gonna join this, I'll stop and bring that back to the camera to show you guys how we're gonna join that together. So on this last side here, I did my miter and then brought this down um, just a couple inches away. I stopped so that I can show you how to join this. Um, basically, I'm just going to like tuck this inside here. It's a little bit longer than I need. Uh, so I will trim this down about an inch past the bottom of my point here. So, and you can do this straight. You can do this at an angle. I usually cut it straight. Um, and then take just a little bit of the bulk off on the back end here. And we can tuck this right inside, make sure I have my pins. And like normally on my quilts, I join my bindings traditionally and actually sew that piece together. Um, but this is just so um, bulky and kind of hard to maneuver under the machine at this stage that I just find this a lot easier and uh, like easier on my hands, easier on the machine, easier on my needles. So I'll take this back to my machine and just continue that 3 8 seam allowance all the way across. So that's joined. Um, it's time to set this piece aside and we're gonna work on the sides of the bag. So when we fold this up, there'll be some sides here. Okay. We're gonna grab that flux foam. You'll have two pieces in your kit uh, and we're gonna grab that smaller piece and uh, we'll fuse one side of it with the lining fabric 
and the other side uh, will just pin or baste in place. Um, as you can see here, to kind of save some time, um, I've already fused that. I've actually already quilted that. Um, I just followed that diamond pattern um, and quilted this a little bit. And then I also took, I had a leftover scrap of my binding and just bound one side of this. We're gonna get that nice and clean and neat. And we're gonna put, cut our side pieces from this. I don't have a memorized. So I'm gonna grab my pattern real quick. Okay, and I'm gonna cut these out. And these are eight by 11 and a half. So our next little bit that we're going to do is we are going to want to add a little bit of a miter to the corners of this to kind of let it sit in a little bit. As you can see on the side of the bag, it's just a little bit of a miter to give it some shape to keep this from popping out and kind of losing its form as you carry it. Okay. So real easily, we're going to take our ruler. I'm going to measure an inch and a quarter um, up and in from the bottom. I'm going to mark that. Um, whatever marking pen you have that will show on your fabric, the friction pen for lighter fabrics. I like the Bohemian pencil for darker ones. So just a little mark there. And then I'm also going to measure three quarter inch in from the bottom um, and mark that on the sides. And basically I've got this little wedge piece here if we drew those lines out. Um, I am going to cut that out, fold those together, and sew that with a quarter inch seam. And you would do this for the two bottom sides of each panel piece. Um, and now we're starting to get into kind of the thicker foam that we're working with here. Um, my pins kind of aren't sufficient enough to keep this together. I really like the like. Uh, small wonder clips here. They're, they're super accurate, but also very strong at keeping this together. All right, I sewed those other four miters off camera. Um, and I just want to show you that this, um, the little excess here kind of sticks out a little bit. We're just going to kind of round that up or trim that flush on all four sides real quick. Yeah. And then we're ready to start adding these to our bag. Okay. Um, like I said, this is going to feel a little weird, the, or the order that we're doing this, but trust me, it, it does work. Um, we're going to flip this over, and we did that 3 8 seam allowance because when we add this piece, we're going to be sewing with a quarter inch, and it's going to be inside of this 3 8 here. So we're going to take that bottom middle, and that's going to line up bottom middle of our bag here. So you can see it kind of just wants to stand up. If I lay it flat, it'll kind of curve. Um, this is where my wonder clips come in. We're going to pin this or um, clip this in place and we'll sew uh, edge to edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is going to be pretty bulky and there's a little bit of, you know, that, that miter here might stop your machine from getting all the way to the very, very corner. This is going to be completely encased when we, when we finish the binding. So you don't have to get it all the way to the very corner. Just get as close as you can without straining yourself and straining that machine. Um, just do the best you can. Okay. 
And then uh, while you're at your machine, um, you know, we've got kind of a lot of bulk we're working with here. This is very flexible. It's, you know, it's kind of stiffer than obviously fabric if we're just working with a quilt top. Um, but don't be afraid to kind of bend stuff and move stuff out of the way as you need. Um, it, can, it can take quite a bit of handling um, and we want this bag to turn out as well as possible. So, so manipulate it as you need and we'll just sew this in. Right, it's kind of looking like it has wings. We got this uh, both sides sewn on in the exact same manner, and then we're going to let's see what's the easiest way to show you. Basically, fold this up, and these two sides will get sewn on one side of the bag first, and then we'll do the other side here. And just in the same way that we did, we're going to pin this in place uh, and then sew with that quarter inch. This time, I actually like to come down on my um, like bound edge first to the corner. Um, if you can, I think sometimes the direction of the, the fabric you can't. Um, and again, we're gonna go, try to get as close to that corner as we can. Um, but if you can't quite nail that seam right in the crevice there, don't worry about it because this will be really secure once we get that binding all the way on. All right, I've got these two sides sewn on. It's a little bit awkward on set here, but we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. I like to keep my bag down and then fold the, um, the sides on top of it. A little hard to see here, but um, again, exact same thing. We're just gonna clip and get as close as we can to that corner when we sew uh, with that quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, we are back from our machine. We've got the four sides sewn onto the bag here, and now we're ready to take the binding that we did earlier and fold this over and bind everything. And when we do this, this will encase all these raw edges that we had here all the way around. Um, this is a bit thicker, um, and it's a little hard to maneuver around your machine, so I do suggest doing this portion by hand. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through just a couple tips and tricks that I've learned over the, the years that I've made this bag. Um, I definitely 100% suggest wonder clipping this. So I'm gonna turn this towards me and start clipping this. And usually, uh, you know, if I have the, the, uh, enough wonder clips to do the whole bag, I will clip the whole thing. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna get a couple sides done here for, for you. And then, um, when we go to the corner here, there's you know lots of ways to bind a quilt or to bind a bag here. Um, I just want to show you one thing that's kind of helped me, and I actually do this on my quilts as well, is that if I have my side over on one side here, I'm going to put that under on the other side so that I have an over, an over, and not two overs over here. 
two unders on this side, um, just to eliminate the bulk and kind of keep that even so I don't have one side of the corner that's way bulkier than the other. So I hope that made sense to you. And then as we work our way down, um, the corners here are gonna be kind of the trickiest part of this. And I just wanna encourage you that, um, you know, again, we can manipulate this fabric as much as we need to as we're sewing it. And then um, you, it's gonna be kind of hard to get the fabric to miter in the corner. So I almost do this, like kind of manipulate the bag and do this flat and just let it fold it fold up in on itself um, and I would say we're just going to try to get that as you know bound as well as we can um, because with that binding with all the things we've done this is already really secure okay we're ready to start hand sewing and this may look a little silly but I pinned my bag kind of out of the way and then I took one of the jars we had on set and just propped this in here this kind of keeps it from collapsing down on itself and getting in my way um, this is what I do when I'm making this for myself at home. Um, and we're just going to start hand binding this. So as we get down into this corner, you can see it's a little more difficult to maneuver. Um, I would just say take your time. And again, I'm not going to worry about mitering this in on itself like that. It's really hard to get that and maintain the, the stitches. So I kind of just manipulate the bag flat along that seam and just do the best that I can um, really once this is standing up and... Um, like folded in on itself, that's gonna kind of naturally miter itself. And we're just basically trying to secure this fabric. And these four little corners, they're the trickiest to get through. This is why I suggest um, binding by hand instead of machine, because it's oh, basically impossible to get your machine around here um, and get it to look nice. I once, really wanted to get the bag done really quickly and did sew this binding by uh, by machine. And that's the bag I actually use the most. And every time I see it, I'm just like, oh, I wish I had taken my time and done the binding by hand. Right, let me just show you what that looks like here. It's from the outside. And then the inside of that curve there. Hi, I'm back and I have just finished the binding on this bag. I you can see that came together beautifully inside and out. This is all bound and uh, contained. That lining's gorgeous. Now we gotta get a handle on this or a strap so we can carry it. And the pattern that I wrote outlines a couple different methods for adding straps to this. With the grommets in your kit, you're gonna have a cotton rope. This is actually like a clothesline rope. You'll have a couple yards of this. And what I do to get this um, like to match the bag is I will wrap this in a, I have a one inch strip of fabric. I think I actually might have a couple widths of fabric of this, maybe two here, two or three. And um, we're going to wrap this around and sew at our sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. One of the things I've done before I cut my fabric or my cord is I wrapped it in a little bit of tape and cut that so that that's um, kind of contained and not fraying there. Makes it easier to join these together. And then I'm gonna take my strip and start a couple inches down from the top and wrap this around. And I like to pin it kind of at the top just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. And then I'm gonna take this to my machine and as I sew down with that zigzag stitch to contain this, I'm gonna keep wrapping this and wrapping this. So there'll be a little bit of stop and start to sew and wrap on this. 
Um, but I found that it was, if I wrapped the whole thing before I got to my machine, it didn't quite lay, um, it kind of tended to coil on itself. So we'll wrap this down and every now and then I'll kind of pull it down to get it in place. And then when I have a little bit left, I'll show you how I join these and then I'll show you how I weave it through the bag and join this all together. All right, friends, we are ready to join our strip and I don't do anything to sew these together. What I'm gonna do is just wrap this around like we've continued to do. I might pin that to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna grab my next strip and just continue to wrap. I might need to pin this one as well. But we're gonna continue this. I don't know why I did that, there we go continue to wrap this around and you might uh, be wondering you know this is a raw edge you know will this fray so I have cut this on the straight of grain and this does fray a very tiny bit you might be able to see a couple little threads hanging out um, I thought oh genius I'll cut this on bias so that it doesn't fray I don't get these long strands hanging off um, I did that here and it kind of got a little spidery. So um, choose how you'd like to do it. I prefer the straight of grain, lots of less threads hanging off, or much less threads hanging off of that. Um, and I just think it's, it's a neater look. You know, if you were so inclined, you can cut your strip a little thicker, roll over, you know, hem, uh, or press an edge onto that, like a hem onto that. Uh, but for me, I was satisfied with just wrapping this and the zigzag stitch to hold it in place. Okay. And when we take this back to our machine, we're going to wrap it all the way down and then leave the end about two or three inches exposed uh, to join it into our bag. All right, I've got the um, clothesline cord wrapped here in fabric. I left about an end, or sorry, one inch exposed on each end. And then we're going to take this and feed it through the grommets here um, all the way through the whole bag and bring both of our raw edges here to the front of one side of the tote bag. And it doesn't matter which side is which because this is going to end up being one continuous cord and um, there will be basically no beginning or end on that. Um, to make my life a little easier, I'm going to grab a little piece of tape and tape these two ends together. Let's see as close, as flush as I can get them. Okay. And then we're gonna continue to wrap this. And this is one where I will want to wrap the whole thing before I start sewing instead of bringing it to my machine and wrapping it there. Okay. And that little juncture where we joined those two ends, um, we're gonna leave the tape there. It's not gonna mess up anything. Um, it can sometimes, um, I have a tendency to kind of pull and get things taut as I sew, and I've pulled that out of the tape before. So just be really gentle when you're handling that. But we're gonna get this all the way wrapped, and I just need it wrapped enough that it's covering where I began with the fabric. Um, so if I have a longer tail, there's no need to wrap all of that tail. I can just cut that off. Okay. Down. Right, I'll do one more wrap. And I always like to pin that in place. All right, back to the machine with a zigzag stitch across the rest of this, and that will be the cord and the bag completely done.
All right, I've got the bag finished here. That cord is completely done. And again, I wanted to show you that when you open this or when you set the bag down, it kind of opens, but it'll stand straight up. And then as you grab it, put it on your shoulder, that cord running through those grommets closes the bag for you. And then again, you can make these straps any length you like. I think you have them uh, long enough to make them quite longer than this in that cord that we give you, but you can cut those down to size for whatever um, length you like on your strap. I did want to show you one more project. I promised you that those leftover scraps we had, I'd use those in something. So I'm going to pull out of here a little pouch I made. Since this is a bag that doesn't have any pockets or any um, pouches in it, I was able to just sew these together. I kind of did a very random improv patchwork on this to get my fabric to make the uh, zippered box pouch, which is a free download on the Shabby website. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. And thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the next Shabby tutorial.